Unlike a fine wine, time typically doesn't bode well for old buildings. Many fall into a state of disrepair. But under the leadership of a group of dedicated people, one old building in Monroe may now be called grand once again. The Virginia Hotel, at one time a symbol of luxury and the pride of Northeast Louisiana. It has now been restored to its former glory, but with a different name. Now it will be known as the Vantage State Building. I remembered as a child, I was with both my parents in downtown Monroe walking and it was in the evening and it already started getting dark. And I got separated from them and I walked into a building and uh, it was the Virginia Hotel. And I remember the experience as a child, but I didn't know what building it was. And uh, anyway, I turned around because I realized I wasn't supposed to be there and started running back out the door and ran into my dad uh, who was looking for me. So uh, you, I couldn't tell it was that building because it had always looked like the state office building uh, since I've been grown. And now, one, like I say, one day after it was renovated and put back the way it was as a hotel, uh, I walked in the front one day and I realized this is that building that I walked into as a kid. The Virginia Hotel has been a beloved Monroe landmark since its opening in 1925. It was built by the Frost Whited Investment Company out of Shreveport, Louisiana, at a then staggering cost of approximately a half million dollars, with another $125,000 spent on furnishings that were shipped from Chicago. The original owner received the $75,000 lot as a gift from the citizens of Monroe with the sole request that the company build a hotel of the finest quality. Designed by the Mann and Stern architectural firm of Little Rock, the hotel building, which was built in the colonial style, featured 160 rooms, each with a private bath or shower available, which was considered quite a luxury at the time. The hotel also housed two ballrooms, the Cheerio Bar, two private dining rooms, a barber shop, the Virginia Beauty Parlor, the Virginia Coffee Shop, a restaurant, a pharmacy, a news and cigar stand, a pressing shop, and a rooftop garden. The six-story structure was built of reinforced concrete and steel, faced in tapestry brick and trimmed in stone. The main entrance on St. John Street is through a broad foyer, at the end of which is a beautiful two-story lobby with massive columns of imported marble and with a backlit pearlescent ceiling. Overlooking the lobby is the mezzanine floor, which forms a hollow square around the lobby below. On this floor is a ballroom, which showcases a large floor made of fine polished maple. This floor also housed the main dining room as well as a banquet hall and two private dining rooms. The hotel opened formally on November 17, 1925 at the corner of St. John and Gramont Streets in downtown Monroe. The opening celebration was especially memorable because it forecast the beginning of a new era of industrial development for Northeast Louisiana. The opening celebration continued for two more days to coincide with the formal opening of Louisiana Power & Light's huge Sterlington power plant in the world's largest natural gas field on November 17th. And the mammoth plant of the Louisiana Pulp & Paper Company at Bastra opening on November 18th. Masses of people arrived from all over the United States to participate in these ceremonies. A dinner dance was held on the eve of the opening for local people who wanted to participate. Since the opening night banquet and ball had so many out-of-town guests, there wasn't enough room for all who wanted to attend, though it was well attended by Monroe's society. The banquet featured a six-course dinner and a jazz band along with speeches from dignitaries. The following night's opening event was broadcast live on the radio station KWKH of Shreveport, Louisiana, through the use of a unique relay service. Special prizes were awarded to listeners. Fox Newsreel of 1925, which was then familiar to all moviegoers, even sent a cameraman to cover the various events of Monroe's triple celebration. During the 1920s, the hotel hosted dinner dances that featured bands of the day drawing in large crowds. It was a popular place for school dances, business meetings, banquets, and society weddings. Oh my goodness, the Virginia was, it was really something, you know, it was the place to, to be. Uh, there were always some functions going on there, whether it was 
school dances or uh, somebody coming in from out of town, an entertainer playing there or something. But Virginia was kind of the center of downtown Monroe in a way. Uh, it was close to St. Matthew. We married at St. Matthew Church. We could have easily walked the block to um, the Virginia. However, uh, we drove, uh, <laughs> but um, it was just the place to be. Mr. Scalia took a trip down memory lane as he toured the newly restored Vantage State Building. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, see now this is, this was the lobby of the hotel. Yeah, that's terrific. You almost hear the, from the ages, hear people talking in here, can't you? And the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, see that's, that's the steps right over there, I believe, where we were uh, when we left. Boy, now this brings back memories. I can, yeah. This, this was all full of kids and people shouting and we were here getting ready to leave. Yeah, this is just amazing how this came out. During its heyday, the hotel also housed the Monroe Chamber of Commerce and the Union Pacific Ticket Office. Many Monroe and West Monroe residents still remember attending high school dances in the rooftop ballroom as late as the 1960s. The Virginia Hotel closed its doors to its tenants on December 22, 1965, to prepare for the sale of the building to the state of Louisiana. The doors of the Virginia Hotel closed permanently as a hotel facility on December 31st of that year. The state of Louisiana purchased the building for $155,000 to convert it into an office building. The state renovated the hotel at a cost of $873,000. The state bought the building because it was expected to pay for itself and saved rental fees alone. Once the renovations were completed, many state offices were moved into the building. The former cameo room on the mezzanine was retained as a meeting room for Louisiana Public Service Commission hearings. The former Virginia Hotel was formally dedicated as the state office building on February 28, 1968 by Governor John McKithin. The state subsequently renovated the building again in 1984. Gradually, many state offices moved out of the building when merchants moved to suburban shopping centers and the Twin City Mall, downtown Monroe, started to decline. In 2002, when the Washita Parish Police Jury needed space for parish offices during the most recent renovation of the courthouse, their offices were moved into the state building until the renovations were completed. The building remained a state office building until Vantage Health Plan bought it from the state in 2014. Vantage hired Lincoln Builders of Ruston to do the historical renovation of the building, which brought the history of the building full circle, since Lincoln Builders was the company contracted by the state to turn the building into office spaces. We can say is this is the, the second time we've renovated this building, because when the state bought it, we renovated it in 1967, and basically covered up all of this beautiful plaster and marble and uh, so now we get an opportunity to go back to take the building plaque down from one that we did in the past and, and put a new building plaque up. This time, instead of putting up layers of construction to cover up all the old plaster and marble, they had to peel back the layers to get the building back to its original state. So our charge was when we started the work was to make the building look as closely as possible to when it was built in 1925. I do a lot of different kind of architectural work, but historic reservation is probably my favorite because it gives you a sense of recreate something in the past that I still feel like has a lot of value and will continue to serve Vantage for many years to come. Once the layers were gone, then certain areas had to be reconstructed to fix damage that occurred when renovation was done to convert the hotel into an office building. A plaster expert from New Orleans reconstructed the beautiful plaster work that had been hidden for over 50 years. Plaster painters restored the plaster frescoes. Marble workers came from Ohio to reconstruct marble columns and make them look like the original columns that had been taken down so many years ago. So through the renovation we went back and restored all of that. So the first floor 
and the mezzanine floor, the old ballroom, and then the banquet room, which used to be the rooftop garden with the two uh, balconies on either end, are my favorite part because they're very much like they were in 1925. Now the building, which was once the jewel of Northeast Louisiana, regains that title again as it reopens as the Vantage State Building. Vantage Health Plan is honored to be able to preserve the historical significance of the Virginia Hotel Building for Northeast Louisiana and its citizens.